that five bands and five albums. I don't know about that one yet. <laughs> I'm going to have to look up some iTunes stuff, but go ahead. All right. Here we go. Welcome to Woodshop 101, a woodworking audio podcast geared toward the Hobby Weekend Woodworker. Our hosts for the show are Jeremy Crawford and Drew Shore. Join these two different craftsmen for a lighthearted banter about everything woodworking, online education, and how they produce content. Topics could include the latest news, tips, tricks, and designs to include furniture, crafts, and shop projects. Welcome to episode number 22. Today we're going to do a question and answer session with Drew. You had the questions, he's going to have the answers. All right, so how's it going tonight, Drew? Doing pretty good. Just uh, sitting here with the wife, and we're enjoying a little bit of quiet time without the kid. Yeah, my my weekend's been pretty hectic trying to get Christmas shopping done and garage sale, and I'm uh, I'm ready to just tap out and just just, uh, go back to work just to have some peace and quiet time for my home life right now. That's the Christmas spirit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, what's uh, what's going on in your shop? I mean, you clearly look like you've been pretty busy. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually. And I think somebody pointed out that I'm I'm probably going to have to give you some help because I'm apparently making headway on my goal for the year, even though I'm cutting it super, super close. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, my mine's out. Um, my goals aren't even going to be accomplished uh <laughs> this year i don't even remember oh no because i haven't even started dressers there's no way i'm gonna get them done in two weeks <laughs> well you kind of have a lot more going on as far as uh your 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 personal life and your uh business life and things like that so a little bit different for you but um i i have been b- pretty busy i've gotten back on my weekly schedule for my uh youtube videos um I, I'm doing the work at night after my daughter goes to bed. I'll spend a little time with my wife um, after she goes to bed, and then about 10 o'clock I'll go out into the shop and work until what I usually think I'll I'll work until about midnight, and then I end up working till about 2 in the morning. <laughs> so um, I, I've been pretty tired the past couple of weeks because it seems like every night I'm out there it's till 2 o'clock. But the, the project that I'm working on now um, – is still that back wall cabinetry. I'm, I think I'm in part five right now, starting part six. And uh, it's just a lot of work to do. I mean, I have to set goals each night on what I want to accomplish before I go to bed. And every one of those goals, in order to make it on time and have a video put out every Saturday morning, is it, it was a lot to do. So, yeah, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, that... That cabinet system's coming together pretty nicely. Um, and your latest video was the uh, countertop, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, look, I'm I'm on top of your videos. I see. Look, I'm <laughs> I got it. No, that 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 countertop looked um, pretty cool. Like it's a you know a lot of people would think about oh we're gonna go with an inch and a half, and if we're gonna make it out of ply, we're just gonna sandwich two pieces of ply with, with maybe like uh, some hardwood trim around it. Uh, but I really like how you put that spin on it because it's almost that torsion box um type of design so where it uh, you know almost is guaranteed to lay flat Mm -hmm. um and and so i i really like how you did that yeah thank you um it i did want a thicker top i originally thought i was going to do a two inch top but the uh drop off from my assembly table to my uh back wall cabinetry was going to be almost two inches. Um, so I wanted a little more of a step down, uh, that was more minute. And that 37 inch high countertop is very comfortable for me to work on. And, um, that would make the adequate height for, for the lathe as well to, to be comfortable to use because the lathe is also going to go on that countertop. So making it the way I did, uh, allowed me to be able to, uh, uh, I guess just customize it to the exact height that I wanted because I certainly didn't want to make it super heavy by sandwiching a whole bunch of pieces of plywood together. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I definitely like how it was done. You know, like that, that torsion box design, um, you know, it helps to to keep it flat and keep it true. So, I uh, and I see you've already started loading down the drawers with uh, 
with your products and getting them organized. Yeah, now that I've got the ability to do the organization, I threw my t-shirts and hats in there and made dividers with some uh, film liners that I got from work. And they're pretty hard plastic pieces that I can cut down and, and label. Because uh, I didn't have a method of organization for my shirts. They were just in a box and trying to get them in and out of the boxes kind of sucked. Yeah. So <laughs> I ended up putting them in the, the drawer system and it's working out pretty well. Yeah, and so... In fact, I think right before we started recording um, or even got on Skype together, I saw that yeah, at some point you're going to possibly be having a sale on your product. Yeah, for a little bit of a Christmas uh, gift to the viewers, I am going to uh, be holding a sale on my shirts. I'm not going to say how much, but it will be uh, pretty significant. Um, and it will just be able to help... Uh, get my my product out there to the people but also kind of liquidate some of my older stuff that I can make room for some newer stuff. Okay. Do, do you have a kind of time frame so the viewers can be watching for um for for that sale? Yeah, it'll probably be the week of Christmas. So, um Monday uh next week. Okay. So, It'd be like what the twenty is that the twenty first? What is that date? Uh, Monday of next week. I don't. Let me see. I got a calendar right here. If it'll ever populate, is the twenty first. Okay, maybe I'll do it on the Sunday the twentieth, since that's the first day of the week. So well, I mean, I'm I'll probably be heading that way. I uh, I need to pick up a new a new t shirt. So I'll I'll get a rocking eight shirt this time. All right. <laughs> nah, I it's gotta- just. I mean, dang! I I can remember probably months and months back. I I was planning on getting one, and then it just seems like I always think about it, and then something else happens, and I think about it again, and then I got to go do something else, and I uh, my let's just say my clothes shopping is very sporadic. <laughs> yeah, I know how you feel. We uh, I'm, I'm down to one pair of jeans, and we went to my <laughs> wife's uh, cr- Christmas party at Ichiban, which is a hibachi grill, last weekend. And I asked her, I was like, oh, you know, what's the attire? And she said, well, it's kind of casual. I was like, all right, well, then I need to go p- pick up a new pair of jeans. And so I went to find jeans, and lo and behold, I couldn't find my size. I got, I buy, I wear, like, the same style of I, I Only one style of jean will I wear. Um, I don't want to have five different styles of jeans because I like one more than the other, and those will get worn more. Um, and the jeans I wear are at Sam's Club for fifty percent off, which you can go to the department store and get them. <laughs> and lo and behold, Sam's had every other size but my size. <laughs> and so I was like, ah, oh, well, okay, I'll go to a Sam's tomorrow and look. And here we are a week later enough still yet to go to another Sam's to look. So <laughs> You just need to lose or gain some weight. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, ho- hopefully after the Christmas time and I engorf myself with, with a lot of food, I will be hitting the gym again <laughs> and uh, trying to lose that weight. I'm right there with you, dude. <laughs> so... Um, well, my shop's been uh, been extremely busy. In fact, uh, two days ago, I just mailed out my final commission for the year, um, and that's it. Um, I don't know when I'm going to take on another commission, um, but I do know I, I have one more project to get done before Christmas, and that's um, kind of like a picture frame shadow box for a gift. And then that's it. I was telling you, I'm gonna probably be, I'm gonna be on vacation for almost two weeks, um, starting Christmas Eve, mm-hmm. and I'll be out of town, so I won't even be by the shop. I'm gonna take my computer, and I'm gonna probably try to work on some business stuff. Um, maybe start working on some different designs for for some quick videos that I want to do after the first of the year, um, or when I get back, I'll, I'll be back in my shop probably on the 5th of January. Um, but yeah, so right now I just cracked out five cheese boards. Um, and they're actually pretty cool because 
I included the like the wire slicing hardware actually built into the cheese board. Oh neat. Um, so they they turned out pretty good and and I actually made a little more money than what I expected to on them because I was able to use up some much needed scraps to make them um out of out of the shop and they turned out a little fancier than I had planned as well because I ended up including walnut and uh let's see walnut paduk some purple heart was in there um I think some wingate was in in it so I ended Very up nice. including a, a lot more uh, exotics than what I initially had quoted for so you know it's nice to when I can give something you know, a little more than what I had really quoted the customer. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm trying to make, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to clean out and just either get rid of stuff. I'm not going to use or I'm not using or get rid of scraps. Um, because come January, I'm going to, I'm going to start fresh and try to get a lot of these projects that I've kind of just been sitting out and around done. Um, and if that means I'm in the shop seven days a week, I'm going to be in the shop seven days a week, um, getting, getting some projects done. Very cool. So, and that, that last commission project that you posted, uh, who, how long have you been on that? The cheese boards. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the commission came in, I don't know, a month ago, maybe, um, but I only started, there was, it, it was a total of five different cheese boards. And that, I, I want to say I started them a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, maybe. Um, and so they knocked out pretty quickly. The longest part was the glue up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it didn't have to be, I guess, necessarily so long, but I didn't want to break out all my, my larger, like my 40 and 50 inch clamps to get these glued up. Um, I pretty much, I used all my 12s and all my 24s. So I had glued them up in two separate batches. I glued up, um, my, uh, a batch of three, um, and let those sit for roughly 24 hours. And then I glued up the other batch of two, um, and let those sit. And d- it just so happens after I finished the glue up, did my 10 new clamps show up. <laughs> so... <laughs> it, uh, but you know, it's, uh, it'll be good cause they're going to get a lot of use, you know, right after the first year you you can expect to see the dining room table done and the sofa table. Um, and that's, I'm not scheduling anything else until those two are done. Um, because after that, it's going to come a workbench, going to come, um, a smaller outfeed table. So I'm going to get rid of the, um, old kitchen Island slash outfeed table that I'm using now. That's, that's going to go and I'm going to actually build some dedicated shop furniture. Um, it, it's time to focus on what I want in the shop and not what everybody else wants. So there you go. That's kind of where I'm at myself. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's roll into it. We've had some questions for you. Um, some are going to be quick answers. Some aren't, some are funny and some are a little more <laughs> serious. So, uh, we got the first one. From Matt Cremona, actually the first three. And he says, who does your hair? (laughs) Uh, I remember when that question came across. It made me laugh. Uh, Well, Matt, if if you're looking for a good hairstylist, which, you know, I've seen your your hair in person. So, you know, you might you might benefit from it. But uh, I've got a stylist in Norman, which is just south of me down in OU country. And uh I have actually been going to her for, gosh, close to nine years, eight, it's, yeah, close to nine years, and uh, as soon as we moved to our home in Norman, before we moved to our current home in Moore, I just went to a Pro Cuts, and that's where she worked, and then, gosh, probably five years later, that Pro Cuts closed, and uh, she opened up a spot at a salon, which is very weird for me to go into a salon. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a loyal customer of hers, so I I still go to her, and, and uh, she cuts my hair every month. Did you get your nails and eyebrows done at the same time? 
Um, you know, the pedicures and, and the and the eyebrows, they come, you know, at a separate appointment because there's just not enough time for that. Oh, well, I mean, the fact that you know the proper name for them just speaks wonders for you. Dude, I'm married. What do you expect? I'm married, but I don't know. <laughs> I just go say, go get your, your toes done. Go get your feet done. If it if it makes you feel any better, I'll, I'll I'll probably turn in my man card now because I've actually gone to get a pedicure with my wife and okay. daughter and I mean, her mother. You, you no, you can't because I would have to give you my man card. My wife would want me to go. <laughs> is is the pedicure the feet? Is that yeah? Okay, so I went and got one of those done, and we went to like this little Asian spot, uh huh, and she won't ever take me again because my <laughs> bill was like one hundred and fifty bucks. Oh, I got no. every. Just, I got everything. Everything they offered, I got. Well, that'll teach her to take you. Yeah. She was like, uh, you know they charge for all that. And I was like, eh, who cares? <laughs> and then come to find out, it was like 150 bucks. I was like, Oof. Ouch. You're like, I'm yeah. here to spoil myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, there goes the tool this month. <laughs> so, all right. Well, then uh, Matt wants to know, where'd you get your guns? And I'm probably meaning what's attached to your arms and not... Uh, what's in a cabinet somewhere? Yeah, I think he's talking about Smith and Wesson. <laughs> oh, that's so you got them named now too, huh? <laughs> well, let's just say a little bit of P ninety and uh, or excuse me, P ninety X and P ninety X three is probably where those came from. Uh, I think that question popped up after I did my little um, Lowe's workout of of uh, loading plywood on a cart. <laughs> So yeah, the, that 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 just came from a little bit of hard work with some P90X. We'll uh, point you in the right direction, Matt. <laughs> All yeah. right, and then uh, do you like pistachios? I do love pistachios, uh, along with cashews. But yeah, around Christmas time, we have some reps bring in uh, bags of pistachios, and I'm talking bags of them. And uh, we everybody just shares them, and they last probably well into the valentine's time frame <laughs> yeah i love i love some pistachios dude they're good um, they're s- sweet i mean the, if you go buy them at like the store they're expensive yes like <laughs> really expensive that's uh, why i love those reps that bring them in yeah all right all right we have one from uh instagram at, let's see mots emog maybe um he said how did you get involved with rockler that was, I guess, like a stroke of luck. Um, I was putting some feelers out through Facebook, going to these uh, businesses' uh, Facebook accounts and sending them messages, private messages, of course, um, asking them you know, if they've ever given any thought about um, sponsoring a woodworking show on YouTube. And uh, after... Uh, several attempts of sending some out. Rockler actually followed up with me um, probably about a day or two later, and he said it was actually kind of fortunate that I sent him this message because uh, he had been watching my show for quite some time, and uh, I was kind of on his radar. And whenever I showed interest in a possible sponsorship, he just kind of, I guess, like fortuitous followed up with me. <laughs> So uh, he had asked if uh, what my goal mindset was for my show and what I had in mind for a monetary agreement for a sponsorship. And um, we came to an agreement about a week later, and um, that's when we started off the, the sponsorship for the show, which was about uh, September, I believe, of last year, because I recently re-signed with them in uh, September of this year. Yeah, um, I would say probably get get down to that is it, if you're trying to get involved with somebody, ask. What's the worst thing I can say is no. So I will say that if you do ask, you need to probably have all your homework done and have your ducks in a row because they will ask you things that you as a YouTube uh, creator should know about your channel. So if you go into it kind of blind, they'll know, and they they'll know that you're really not that serious about it. So have have your homework done before you start asking those uh, those companies for sponsorships. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we have a couple questions from Paul Mayette. 
um, that you may or may not be able to answer. What are your <laughs> top five bands or groups that you listen to? Uh, yeah, I I don't know if I have a top five or not. I mean, it's not something that I I listen to religiously. Um, Name the first five that popped to your head. <laughs> <laughs> I, they don't that's the problem they don't <laughs> pop to my head <laughs> um I, i'm sitting here actually just trying to look through my itunes just to see what ones i i favor the most but i really don't i mean i do like a lot of the 80s bands uh like twisted sister um i i had listened to some judas priest as well uh back when i was younger and those those kind of songs like we're not going to take it from twisted sister it's just one of my favorites to uh, really get in in a kind of a a spunky kind of mood. Um, I used to do bicycle tricks to that song, and uh, it just kept me motivated to to m- really nail my tricks. But uh, it was probably a lot of '80s music, if I had to say, and maybe some early '90s. And sad to say, I would have to say <laughs> Vanilla Ice was in that. <laughs> um, let's see, MC Hammer. Gosh. Yeah, I think Genesis was another one uh, that I listened to. So I'm really more of an 80s and early 90s person. Um, As far as albums, whenever I was growing up and buying CDs, I didn't buy them for the album. I bought them for like a song. So I spent like $18 on a CD just to have that one song. (laughs) Yeah, I remember. And now CDs are... I mean, you still buy CDs, but they're almost a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. I didn't Um, even go into price a CD just to see if they're actually holding their value or not. Yeah. Well, look, I had a a guy at work, we were talking about the other day, his daughter, which is like 14 maybe, asked for a CD Walkman for Christmas. And he looked at her and was like, what? Are you you serious? (laughs) She's like, yeah. He's like, you don't even own a CD. She said, well, I'll I'll buy some. (laughs) And he was like, is this... Like, do kids at school have this? Is this a thing? Is it coming back? She's like, well, there's a few people that have them at school. And he was like, I think we'll just buy you some iTunes gift cards and get you an iTunes account set up. How about that? <laughs> that works. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, sorry, see, sorry, Paul. I couldn't elaborate a little bit further on you for that. <laughs> let's see. Jeff Vandenberg said, uh, how did you get started in woodworking? Um, the starting part happened, uh, back in junior high. I actually took wood shop in junior high, mainly because my dad at the time was doing a lot of hobby woodworking for family as well as just anything in, in our house. Um, and he worked out of a two car garage as well and he had a shop smith. So I got to see how that, how that worked when I was growing up. However, back then I he probably couldn't drag me out into the shop willingly. It was more like kicking and screaming because uh, I, I just wasn't interested at that time. And then whenever I hit junior high, I thought, well, I'll just take it because, you know, my dad does woodworking. And, you know, if I have a question, I'll ask him, which it, later on I'll explain it was a bad idea. But uh, I, st- <laughs> I started in junior high doing just piddly projects but learning how to use some of the bigger tools like at that time the router and my band and the bandsaw was my favorite um so i i would get patterns and and trace the patterns on a piece of pine which uh buying we had to buy our wood and wood shop too so it wasn't exactly cheap whenever we did it so whenever i bought them um i had to make sure that i bought just what i needed and and nothing extra so i had to make sure i didn't screw up and uh, I would trace those lines out with a router and a V-groove bit just to, you know, make like a bear that says welcome, like he's holding a sign that says welcome, something like that. And as I grew into high school, I, I started making uh, clocks and painting the images of what I was uh, uh, cutting out on the, the wood to make a big old clock. I think my, the one that took me the longest was Tasmanian Devil. Uh, you know, flying with his tornado and the clock was just kind of in the middle. Uh, and, and after that, though, I really didn't do much woodworking after I got out of high school, uh, mainly because I just wanted to make money and, and just, you know, work just so I could make money. And I didn't really get back into woodworking after that until 2006 when I got married 
and that's when I started doing craft shows and collecting uh, a lot of the tools, especially the like the table saw that I got from my wife's grandfather, who passed shortly after giving it to me. Um, so that's where the Rock and H came from, by the way. But uh, I, I'll I'll kind of digress and go back to the whole junior high thing when I said I asked my dad for his opinion. Um, back whenever I was in the shop, I was wanting to make a, a towel rack or a, a paper towel rack, and it needed a one inch dowel rod to go in a one inch hole that I had previously cut the day before. And when I went out to the shop to get one from my dad, I said, Dad, I need a need a one inch dowel rod. And he said, All right. And he was just kind of annoyed, I think, because he was in the middle of something. And he grabbed a dowel rod and he said, There you go. And I said, Is this a one inch? And he said, yeah, you can consider it an inch. And that, uh, I was like, okay. So I t- took it to school. Turns out he gave me an inch and a quarter. And I didn't know that at the time. And when it didn't fit in my one inch hole, I began to start trying to sand that sucker down so it was start to fit. <laughs> and my shop teacher came over and said, son, what are you doing? I said, well, my dad gave me this dowel rod. He said it was an inch and it's not fitting. And he said, that's because it's an inch and a quarter. And he said, well, you can consider it an inch, he said. And he said, well, son, you can consider that a, a rocket ship if you want to, <laughs> but it is not an inch. <laughs> so that is an inside joke I have with my dad. Well, um, if you want to hear more about uh, both mine and Andrew's, uh, I guess, backstory, then uh, head to the website and check out episode number one um about well almost a year ago now we talked about all of uh all of our backstories and how we got started so all right uh the second question jeff asked was with all the projects you do do you find yourself um getting more in debt or uh racking up the credit cards well because of my sponsorship uh, with Rockler, uh, the money that I make from my business is typically the money I spend for the projects for myself. <clears throat> so um, my personal account and my business are completely separate. So I try not to buy things like that um, through our, our our main checking account, our, our personal account. So I really don't rack up any credit card debt. And uh, I don't really buy the materials unless I have the money. Uh, in my business account. Uh, so I try and make money as, as many different ways as I can, either by doing a uh, commission project when I'm running low on funds and project ideas for that matter, because if I can't buy any wood, I can't build any projects for the channel. So I try and get a commission project that I can video record so I can have a video, but also make money on so I can go buy some more stuff for a future project video. Um, so no, I, d- I really don't find myself getting in, in debt, but I think it's just because I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have the, the Rockler, um, sponsorship to help me out with that as well as some, uh, just some offhand, uh, commission work. Okay. All right. Um, well, I got a couple questions for you. Um, All right. what is one dream project that you want to complete? A dream project would probably be my kitchen. Um, redoing my entire kitchen is, has been on my list for quite some time. Even when I was living in a rent house, I was always looking at the kitchen thinking, you know, I could make this so much better. And now that I'm in a home of my own, the kitchen that we own is, um, it's, it's good, but the cabinetry is very, I wouldn't say it's off the shelf because I think they made it while like sticking it up on the wall, um, because the face frames were made with the cabinets already attached to the wall. So it was, it was really stick built together. Um, and they're okay, but they're really inefficient. They don't have any drawers down low. It's all just shelving down low and I hate it. Um, and the configuration around like the refrigerator and, and the peninsula bar, I don't, I don't like. And plus there is a wall that is separating the living room and the, uh, kitchen that I want to take out and make a bar that kind of overhangs into the living room. Um, and I kind of get my, my shot, not at the kitchen, but at practice for the kitchen because we're going to be redoing the office in the next few months. Uh, and it's going to be a fairly big build as well. So, uh, yeah, that's probably my dream 
project right now is the kitchen. That's yeah, funny that that you said that because, in fact, me and my wife just a few hours ago were talking about if we own this house, what our kitchen would look like and how we would how we would change it to open up the flow to the rest of the house. So that's funny that that you were saying that because we were just talking about that. <laughs> yeah, it's an ongoing conversation with my wife uh, whenever we're in there cooking. It's like, man, this would be so much better once I get done with it. But it's just one of those things where you're like, well, once once we're out of debt, maybe. <laughs> but yeah. if if the sponsorships keep happening, like I said, it'll be separate from my personal stuff. So maybe I could afford to do it later. All right. What is uh, one project that you will complete in 2016? Uh, another goal project. Yeah. Um, or I mean, yeah. I mean, you could consider <laughs> it a goal now, or you could just be like, well, this is what I would like to build in 2016. No, I think I'll set a goal. I mean, I'm I'm cutting it close with this one, but you know, I got the assembly table done last season and uh, this cabinetry for the back wall is something that I told I think I told you this last year that I was going to have done before the end of the year and I'm really cutting it close. Um I will have it done though. Yeah, you will. I Better than think, me. Yeah, there you go. I think what I would like to have done this year is completing the cabinetry storage organization for my sliding compound saw and uh, radial alarm saw cabinet. And it's going to be different because it's not going to be attached to the wall. It'll actually be freestanding. So I've got to come up with a method in order to attach it to the garage floor that... I can remove later without much problem uh, and patch the holes and then re-epoxy over the patch. Uh, so it's it's I, I've been working through it with my head, trying to get better uh, ideas on how to do so, and also working out how I want the storage solutions for it to be done um, because I've got certain tools that are going to have to be kept in it as well as being brought out of it and put somewhere on that cabinet as a functional um, use of that cabinet, kind of like my hollow chisel mortar, sir. I can't use it on a pullout shelf. It's actually got to be put on the tabletop, and I want to be able to insert it in a certain section of the tabletop that would allow me to um, use it efficiently and effectively. Uh, and I, I've been priding myself here lately on coming up with storage solutions that people really don't think about. Um, so I, I've really got to prepare for that particular project, but that is something I really want to get done next year. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be on both mine and your list is getting some much needed, um, shop organization, trying to get like those type of projects done because I figure once my tools have a home and then I can feel free just to like build whatever I want and not have to worry about. Um, moving tools around to make them efficient. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you know I'm, I'm going to be right there with you, completing some some storage um, places for, especially for like my lathe, um, drill press stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I've I've got my lathe and scroll saw and and uh, gosh, a couple other a couple other items that are going to have to have a new home. So yeah, yeah. the storage solutions are coming. All right, well, uh, let's go with the last question here. If you only got to meet one more woodworker, YouTube, um, TV, doesn't matter, who would it be and why? Well, thanks to the Woodworking in America, I have actually met quite a few of, of the YouTube woodworkers, uh, which was an awesome, th uh, surreal thing to do. Um, but... I would have to say by far, and it's mainly because I grew up watching him with my father, uh, would have to be Norm Abram. And uh, that was just, it was a very easy answer to come up with just because my dad loved to watch him. And it was every Saturday morning that was the ritual. It was eat breakfast and then get ready for some new Yankee workshop. And my okay. dad would purposely record those so he wouldn't have to buy them. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's the way to do it. The, the old VHS player where you could record anything. Yeah. <laughs> so. I actually got those, too. He brought them to me a couple of weeks ago, and I, I'm going to see if I can have them converted. But, 
I don't know if they're they're probably too old. They might break. <laughs> yeah, that or if you take them somewhere to do it, they might look at it as copyright um, and not do it. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know either. But you know, I mean, I I was pretty sure you were going to say you wanted to meet me, but you know, I guess <laughs> I guess Norm's Norm's a good one. That's well, you're, I, you were you were my second choice. I mean, I, I'll I'll let him slide. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Well, um, those were good questions. Yeah, they they were. Um, I really liked it. That this is this is interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, you get some off the wall ones like Matt gave you, but <laughs> yeah, the hair. So, all right. Well, uh, I kn- we started a new segment on our last show, and we're going to continue it this week. Um, what product or tool do you recommend for the week? Oh. <laughs> I had to think about it for a little bit, and it's mainly because whenever I'm doing my woodworking projects um, and my my project videos, it seems like there's always something that I'm using that has come in handy and has really earned its um, really earned its stripes in my shop. And one of the big ones that here lately I've been using is the 20 volt Porter Cable Impact Driver. Uh, I bought that at a uh, big box store here locally uh, probably about mm, maybe four or five months ago. And uh, it was a set of a drill and an impact driver and had two batteries and, and a rapid charger. And those things have been the beans in my shop. And because they're the lithium ion batteries, I hardly have to charge those suckers. They hold a charge for so long and they will go full capacity until they are dead and that impact driver has has really been a workhorse in the shop and i i luckily didn't get rid of my old impact driver because it actually came in handy the other day doing those cabinetry uh builds because my 20 volt finally ran down and i didn't have another backup (laughs) yeah um so maybe a year maybe about a year ago i replaced mine i had an old uh Ryobi 18 volt set Um, and so it was time to upgrade and I really did a lot of shopping and I was torn between either the the DeWalt um, 20 volt or the Porta Cable 20 volt and the Rigid 18 volt and I really wanted to go with the extra 2 volts Um, you know there's a lot of people say there's a dramatic power increase just from the 18 to 20 volt Um, and you know what, what? What really came down for me was that um, Rigid offered lifetime guarantee, um, free replacement on their batteries, and nice. So I, 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 mean, I can't complain. I, I love the Rigids. Um, they're just like the Porter cables. They run strong until the battery dies. That's it. There's no mm-hmm. dwindling in power, um, and they charge pretty quickly. And I, uh, I'm now at the point that I, I'm, I need something just a little smaller. I need to go maybe like a 12, um, something like that, just for smaller tasks um, that I don't need to, to carry around the 20 volt or the 18 volt. Um, some that didn't require or use a lot of torque. Yeah, and I uh, was playing around with the Rigid and the Makita. Um, and maybe the Milwaukee. Yeah, and the Milwaukee. All their 12 volts, they're nice, but they are so heavy. Yeah. Ridiculously heavy. And they're ranging, uh, you know, 100 bucks for just the the drill. Um, and I, you know, I already own a lot of Festool tools. In fact, I just bought another one. I just bought their new brushless sander that's not even, it's not even in my shop yet. It's still being shipped. Um, I think I'm going to end up going with one of their 10 volt and pay the extra, um, hundred bucks to get it. Um, but it just, everybody that I talk to that has it says it's very lightweight. Um, and, and I'm looking for a small footprint. So if I need to drive like a pocket hole screw into a narrow area, I have a, a drill that can, that can do that. It's got a small footprint. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
Now that I've said all that, I'm not recommending any of those this week. I'm <laughs> recommending the Jet Parallel Clamps, and that's mainly because I just spent um, almost a fortune. I spent ha- 50% of a fortune <laughs> on getting 10 new clamps for their 50% off Black Friday sale, and I'm pretty sure Drew did the same thing. Um, oh, I missed that, actually. <laughs> You didn't get any? No, I wish I could have, but whenever I went to log in, they said that they were completely out of stock. I'm like, dang it! Oh, yeah, I, uh, I, I did it. I usually go through Beaver um, Industrial Supply, and I ordered at 12.30 in the morning. I was going to order at 12, but I fell asleep, and I just happened to wake up at 12.30. So I ordered them at 12.30 in the morning. And I ordered 10 new clamps, um, some 12s and some 24s and some 40s. And I uh, only buy those once a year, and that's when I buy them. And I use them <laughs> on almost every project. So that uh, that is what I'm recommending this week. And, and in fact, I'm probably going to – okay, I know I'm getting some more for Christmas because <laughs> uh, my mom already told me. <laughs> So I don't know what size or how many, but I know I'm getting some more. So Christmas Day, I'm going to unwrap some more clamps. That's good. So there's going to be there's going to be a clamp rack um, within the first few months of of the of the year because um, I need to get those things up off the floor so I can start building and getting other projects done. I know a really good set of plans you can download. Uh, so do <laughs> I. Um, so do I. So somebody just built some recently. I don't. I don't remember who, but yeah, no, he's, he's kind of a. I don't know. He, he's just weird. But yeah. yeah, yeah, I saw it too. Yeah. So all right. Well, <laughs> if you guys would like your question answered on air, guaranteed, or you just want to hang out with us after the show, you can head over to Patreon and become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash woodshop one hundred one. Um, if a recurring donation is not your cup of tea, head over to the show notes, and there will be a couple different links for one-time recurring or one-time donations, not reoccurring. And if you don't want to do that, we highly encourage you to just head to iTunes, and give us a review, and the, much less give us a five-star review because once we 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 keep getting those reviews, we get a bigger audience. We start being placed on. You know, they're, they're highly recommended channels, um, you know, so it, if you can't donate anything to us, just head to iTunes, give us a review, because um, that helps us out greatly. Yep. Sharing with everyone really, really helps. All right, Drew, if you want to get on the contact info, we'll get out of here. Well, as far as us individually, uh, if you would like to contact me, uh, you can reach me several different ways. I have a website of... Uh, rhwoodshop.com as well as my email drew short at rhwoodshop.com uh, you can also find me on facebook and twitter uh, mainly searching the same way or just searching my name um, also i'm pretty active on instagram here lately uh, so you can find me there it's still rhwoodshop um, and then uh, if you want to reach us on the show uh, you can send us through uh woodshop101podcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube as well as uh, Facebook and Twitter. And uh, Jeremy, what? How, how would they reach you? Uh, you can pretty much find anything at my website at countrysideworkshop.com. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Um, I think that's about it. But yeah, head to my website. You can find links to all those. Um, and, and you can get in contact with me. Very cool. And also, if you guys are interested in having a question answered on air from us, we actually have a voicemail phone number that you can call, and you don't have to have a computer to use it. You can just make a a phone call from any cell phone. And uh, the area code for that is uh, 409-234-3959. And just leave us a voicemail, and we will more than likely play that on air and answer your question for you. So... That's pretty much it as far as how to contact us. So if you guys have anything that you want to send us, we would love to hear from you. So from Jeremy and myself and pretty much anybody that has listened to this show, we would like to thank you. So remember to be safe in your shops, and I guess we will talk to you next time. So Jeremy, do a little sign-off. One, two, three. Boom. Boom.